This is holding her accountable. Getting in front of a crowd, acting like it's schizophrenic, then leaving is holding AOC accountable for a decision she didn't make. There's a reason why, even if I don't always agree with it, the United States has a policy of we don't negotiate with terrorists. So I don't know if you guys know this, uh, but AOC was confronted by quote unquote anti-war protesters at one of her events recently. Um, I wanted to see if I could bring up, do we actually have the clip? I don't think I have the clip on hand. I think we can watch the clip quickly, uh, so we can talk about how AOC responded to this and Aaron Mate getting angry at her for supporting a free and democratic, uh, Ukraine. Um, let's see, a AOC protester, maybe that'll bring it up. Here it is. Okay, let's watch the clip. Okay, let's watch the clip. So... The, the context for this is AOC did approve and vote for weapons to Ukraine, which is a good thing, by the way. We support that of the Dylan Birds TV channel. We like it when we give uh, the victim a means to defend themselves, whether that be against an imperialist invasion, whether that be uh, against an occupation, or whether that be things like rape or, or murders. Like, we, we support not only uh, the ability for people to defend themselves in their day-to-day -day lives, but also for nation-states to govern themselves and rule themselves and have a means to defend themselves. Um, this protester, not so much. Uh, they're much more uh, interested, less in, you know, whatever the Ukrainian people want, and more what will allow him the virtue signal in front of this crowd. Now, let's listen to what this protester had to say. Um, and we're going to talk about what was happening here because AOC was actually answering a separate question when this person started to yell. So let's play. Congresswoman, none of this matters unless there's a nuclear war, which you voted to send arms and weapons to Ukraine. Tulsi Gabbard, she's left the Democratic Party because there are a bunch of war hawks. Okay, you originally voted, you ran as an outsider, yet you've been voting to start this war in Ukraine. You're voting to start a third nuclear war with Russia and China. Why are you playing with the lives of American citizens? You're playing with our lives. There will be no neighbors if there's a nuclear bomb. You voted to mobilize and send money to Ukrainian Nazis. You're a coward. You're a progressive socialist. Burns is an immoral, morally corrupt, bankrupt He's man. He's telling the right truth. You have done nothing. Tulsi Gabbard has shown guts where you've shown cowardice. I believed in you. Burns is an immoral, morally corrupt, bankrupt man. There are more people who virtue signal off of foreign policy than any other issue in the world. There's a lot of people who think that if you support gun, Burns then you are evil. Immoral. I think that's really how a lot of people think. That if you ever send a gun anywhere to do anything or use a gun or use thing to go pew in any situation, you're like a demon. Even in situations where you're fighting off an invader. I think a lot of people's foreign policy is just like bomb bad, gun bad, uh, explosive device bad never use bad 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 and they'll justify it through any means they want to they'll like say oh you know the weapons industrial complex it's like okay but people have made money off of the selling of guns since the beginning of man that doesn't mean that every single struggle that has ever involved violence is is in an immoral struggle but it, it really feels like that that is how some people function like in like in this interaction that's how these protesters are functioning Anyway, let's uh, let's continue. That's what you've become. You are the establishment and you are the reason why everybody will end up in a nuclear war unless you choose to stand up right now and denounce the Democratic Party. Will you do that? Yes or no? I'm sorry, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. We'll get into it in a second. But what a dumb, like, okay, everyone's gonna die if you are a Democrat. Everyone's gonna blow up if you stay in Nancy Pelosi. Like, that's what it seems to be. Like, everyone's gonna die if you stay a Democrat. That seems to be like the, the it's like either you're a Democrat and everyone dies, or you stop being a Democrat and everyone lives. That's like the two options he's proposing. It's, oh my God. Okay, simple. Are you going to stop nuclear war? 
like it's her like it's her decision to stop nuclear war she can't stop nuclear war it's not she's not the one with the power to press the button to launch the nukes she's not the person invading the other country she's the person supplying the country which is defending itself with the means to defend itself and russia is the one that is threatening to start a nuclear war you shouldn't be pressuring aoc to stop supporting the victim here you should be pressuring the people who are threatening to start nuclear war from you you know going into nuclear war being clear that it will come with stark consequences if your answer to people who threaten to blow up the world is will give you everything you want what you're doing isn't encouraging people to not engage in nuclear war you're encouraging people to engage in nuclear terrorism because all you've sent the message is hey you threaten to use nuclear weapons and the world will give you anything you want and then al-qaeda is going to look at that and say damn all i need to do is get a hold of one or two nuclear warheads and i can get anything i want anything there's a reason why even if i don't always agree with it the united states has a policy of we don't negotiate with terrorists and i'm not saying we shouldn't negotiate with russia at all but the position should not be russia threatens to end world with nukes therefore we give russia everything they want if you don't give russia everything you want then you want to destroy the world and it's your fault not the fault of the people making the threats it's ridiculous it's ridiculous yes or no there is no line because this is bullshit none of this matters if we're all dead <laughs> I'm sorry, man. He's such a child. None of it. You know that. If you, if you don't, if you don't become grifter like Tulsi and go campaign for Carrie Lake in Arizona, an election denier, a pro-drug war candidate, if you don't campaign for her and be like Tulsi Gabbard and say wokeness is destroying America, that's the real nuclear bomb, then you want everyone to die. Listen to this nonsense. By the way, I, I I'm kind of I'm kind of spoiling it for you. This guy ended up being a Larucheite, okay? He ended up like promoting a Larucheite conference right after this. You know, with Jackson Hinkle, Infrared, all of those types, all those people who don't care about freedom, don't care about democracy, support the Russian invasion of Ukraine, support the bombing of Ukrainian men, women, and children, support what Russia did in Izium and filling up the largest mass grave since the end of the Yugoslav genocides, right? So it's not that surprising that this guy isn't acting rationally or he's not making like a rational argument. He's just saying, if you don't stop being a Democrat, everyone's going to die. So if you don't purposely subuku your political career in front of me and leave the one party where you can actually get elected in New York City, if you don't do that, then everyone's going to die. There's no other option. It's either you become Tulsi Gabbard or you die. That's the two options he's provided here. It's fantastically ignorant. Then let's take it up right now because this is the only thing that matters. By the way, listen to this. This is the only thing that matters, okay? This is the only thing that matters. She was talking with, about other issues with, with people at this, at this event, you know, drug war issues, issues with housing, issues with, you know, making sure that the you know, groceries don't cost too much. And he's like, this is the only thing that matters is making sure Russia gets as much of Ukraine so they have more territory to fill up mass graves in because that's the only thing that's going to stop the world from exploding. Listen, listen to this doomerism. Imagine if somebody during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, when the Soviet Union killed millions of civilians, said, you know what, America, if you do not s stop supporting the Mujahideen, everyone in the world is going to die. Now, you can be against supporting the Mujahideen, but the idea that it's either A, you destroy the world, or B, just allow the Soviets to butcher Afghanistan. Like, these are like the only two options. Could you imagine if we did this during the invasion of Vietnam? If we said, if the Vietnamese don't submit to us right now, we're going to end the world. Do you think Russia and the Soviet Union and China and all the other world actors would have been like, well, okay, I guess the Vietnamese have no option but to become the 51st American state. No, this is not how foreign policy works. The Russians have tricked you, dog. I'm sorry. This is the only thing that matters right now. We could be in a nuclear war at any minute and you continue to fund it.
that's true of all times anytime everywhere forever like we could be in a nuclear war because of any number of, of clashes that we had during the cold war the solution to that is not though okay you submit to nuclear threats if you submit to nuclear threats then the message you send is nuclear terrorism is a successful strategy every terrorist org every despot tin tin hat nonsensical dictator is just going to speed towards nuclear weapons whether that's in eritrea sudan myanmar they're all going to speed towards nuclear weapons and then before you know it all they're going to say is hey if the world doesn't help us ethnically cleanse the muslim rohingya from myanmar well then we're just gonna i don't know we're just gonna nuke them <laughs> like is this is this what the type of world we're gonna build we're out of nowhere after the cold war we're going to say nuclear terrorism is the is a successful negotiating tactic is is a is a normal respectable negotiating tactic we're going to say because russia decided to do a fruitless invasion of ukraine we have to even as they start to lose just start giving into their demands because they're going to make big threats and pound their chest over it it's ridiculous it's ridiculous by the way, could you imagine if we did something similar to Russia and we invaded, I don't know, Mexico, and we said, you know, in Mexico, there's a lot of cartels, evil people, bad, bad people, and we had to get rid of them. We had to decartelify the country, and so we're invading, and we're going to take Tijuana, and we're going to take this, and we're going to take that. Do you think these people would be like, well, you know, if America makes nuclear threats, maybe the rest of the world should just submit to America? Of course not. Of course not. Wilhelm, thank you so much for giving a tier one sub and saying the guy is when Twitter tanky went outside and touched grass, sicko posting, uh, psycho posting, a uh, scary AF. True. That's what's going on. Why not right now? You're the liar here. Nobody has hold you accountable. That's what's happening. This is holding her accountable, getting in front of a crowd, acting like it's schizophrenic, then leaving is holding AOC accountable for a decision she didn't make. She didn't invade Ukraine. She didn't make the nuclear threat. She doesn't even have control of America's nuclear doctrine outside of one vote in Congress and leaving the Democratic Party, as this person is suggesting, is not going to fix any of the issues he's talking about. And it is time for you to stand up and realize that what you've been saying has been lies. Let your conscience come through for once. <sighs> okay, so these two people embarrassed themselves thoroughly. Uh, they decided that the main culprit for this war was AOC, not Putin and the person who ordered the invasion, not the, pers the people filling up mass graves, not the people uh, forcefully deportating mass amounts of Ukrainians and putting them through filtration camps, not the people burning Ukrainian literature, not the people declaring martial law in occupied territory, which we're going to get into in a second, not any of them. The real culprit here is the person with no control over America's nuclear arsenal, AOC, outside of one vote in Congress. This is her fault. And because she didn't leave the Democratic Party and be like Tulsi Gabbard, who, by the way, wants to escalate the drone war in the Middle East. Nobody ever talks about that when it comes to her foreign policy agenda, okay? Somebody who supported drone strikes throughout the Middle East wants to continue and intensify the war on terror. If they don't become like Tulsi Gabbard and going out and campaigning for people like Carrie Lake, an anti-democracy candidate, a pro-drug war candidate, if they don't support Carrie Lake, then you truly aren't trying to end the destruction of the war. You're either a Democrat end, end of the world cultist or a respectable Republican or independent Tulsi Gabbard type. It's ridiculous. It's a, a ridiculous dilemma that was posed. So afterwards, when AOC was asked about this, uh, she responded and Aaron Mate tweeted out this response that she posted on Instagram. AOC accuses her anti-war protesters of parroting pro-Putin talking points, which they did, which they did. The idea that uh, this is America's fault and, you know, America is the one risking the, the, the destruction of the world and it isn't the country that invaded the other country. It isn't the country that's threatening to nuke everyone it's not them threatening the destruction of the war it's the united states for supporting ukraine's defense against the invasion 
she has nothing to say about Biden's rejection of diplomacy, nor explain how the squad approved billions of dollars in weapons will end the war. She invokes, instead invokes Ukraine's self-determination. So two things. First thing, she has nothing to say about Biden's rejection of diplomacy. It is Ukraine's job to negotiate. They're the one getting invaded not the United States. You could say Amer America should maybe encourage Ukraine to negotiate, but it also depends on what terms. Does this mean a ceasefire where Russia will just be able to, you know, delay, rebuild its armies, mobilize, and then start a second offensive into the country, which is what a ceasefire would end up doing at this point? Or is it the negotiation, which has been talked about on Russian state television, that would need a minimum of the recognition of the annexation of Crimea, recognition of the annexation of Kherson, recognition of the annexation of Donetsk, recognition of the annexation of Luhansk, and a recognition of the annexation of Zaporozhye, as well as Ukraine swearing to not join any alliance structure that they could use to prevent themselves from getting evaded again in the future, as well as a guaranteed water supply to Crimea, and that is the base level demands. No wonder Ukraine doesn't want to negotiate under those uh, conditions if they're the ones winning right now and pushing back the Russian army. Uh, anyway, by the way, when somebody asks how is sending billions of dollars in weapons, how will that help end the war? By winning it. If Ukraine has guns and they kill the occupier, then the occupier could go away because the occupier is dead or the occupier will be beaten up so much they'll have no choice to leave. This is how Algeria got their independence. This is how Vietnam got their independence. This is how the United States got its independence with France supplied the United States with weapons to fight the most powerful empire on the planet, the British Empire, and we won. This is how, you know, a lot of nations have gotten their independence. Uh, anyway, let's read AOC's message before we wrap up uh, this, this segment. <clears throat> Could you speak on being confronted by anti-war protesters? Sure. They were actually not anti-war protesters. They were right-wing Trumpers, and some were LaRoucheite cult members. They were LaRoucheite cult members, by the way. That second guy who was speaking actually plugged a LaRoucheite event afterwards. Not progressives, as they have claimed. Their own social media history shows that. It was a stunt that they do from time to time. Last time, they showed up to a town hall yelling about eating babies or something. It's a thing they do to go viral and draw in people. This is the same reason I had uh, an initial negative reaction to the people who poured soup on the painting, the Van Gogh painting, because it just feels like attention-seeking behavior, not like activism. This time, they were parroting pro-Putin talking points. It is not anti-war to support Russia's imperialist project to invade and seize neighboring countries either. Ukraine, like other nations, has the right to self-determination. The only person instigating threats of nuclear war is Putin. No one else. Based and true. As far as their comments about Tulsi Gabbard, Gabbard has voted for more defense budget increases than I ever have. Zero. Look it up. Happy to dig more into Ukraine and other posts. A lot of these right-wing video and social media stunts are predicated on people not knowing the context and just believing whatever the person is saying for face value. For example, in the video, they cut out the part where they waited to yell until a deaf constituent was trying to ask the question so it would look like everyone was mad at their words instead of the fact that they were harming a person with a disability. Now, this last part about harming a person with a disability does sound like like they were harming them in a way like physically or something and obviously that's not what they were doing but they did yell over a person with a disability a uh, disability that impacts their ability to speak in here anyway and i think she addresses this quite well and i think this shows the the you know the quality of the person aoc is in comparison to someone like tulsi gabbard when the going gets tough for aoc when she is is getting a lot of heat in media, when she you know is is not having the the um, you know the legislative success that she wanted, she didn't just say this job is too hard. I'm gonna switch teams for clout, like Tulsi Gabbard did. She stays to her values, stays to her guns, explains exactly why she supports Ukraine out of a principled position, mind you, and sticks with it. And this is this is something that honestly 
is a is a good surprise to see from AOC, a very good surprise to see from AOC that she's not going to cave for these uh, the LaRoucheite sycophants for these pro Putin nerds. And she's going to stick by the principled position of supporting Ukrainian self-determination and giving the victims the tools it needs to engage in their own liberation. I, I am honestly, positively surprised about AOC doing this. I have regularly talked about how I feel like a lot of times on the left, like the AOC type crowd, um, that I feel like the only foreign policy engagement they have is just whatever America doing, just do the exact opposite of. And for a lot of foreign policy issues, it's very easy to be on the right for that, whether that be Yemen, whether that be the Iraq war, whether that be our uh, our, our meddling in Haiti, whether that be uh, our, our embargo on Cuba, whether it be our pulling out of the JCPOA, like a million different, million different issues. You know, it's not hard to, Vietnam, it's not hard, the Contra scandal, it's not hard to see how that position is, you know, tempting. But she didn't do that. And I really respect her for that, for having a more grounded foreign policy opinion outside of I'm just going to do whatever is fashionable and trendy on Twitter, which I, which I was I was fearful that a lot of the people, a lot of the legislators like AOC, who's very popular online, might fall into that trend because there's a lot of perverse incentives to just do whatever is popular online because that's how you get attention. That's how you get attention on Twitter. That's how you get attention on Instagram. That's how you get attention on TikTok. But she didn't do that. I'm really proud of her for doing so. I'm really, I'm really proud of her for doing so. I don't hate her, but I want to see if she can appeal to me as a Texan. So detached from the New York issues. Well, I mean, you know, she's a New York legislator. So it, it makes sense that she, that her, she would be focused on New York issues as she's at, you know, like a, like a town hall in New York, right? Like if you listen to the type of issues I care about, a lot of them are going to be centered towards Maryland because at the end of the day, we have a state government and we have a federal government and part of a uh, congressman's congresswoman and congressman's job is to get resources for their for the localities. Um, and so I'm not that surprised, but I am interested to see if AOC can continue to evolve her political career to a point where she could appeal more nationally in the type of stuff she's advocating for. I think the Green New Deal was one of the things that I think was the most obvious example of that. Which, by the way, LaRoucheites call that green fascism, by the way, which just shows the type of things they're interested in and the fact that they're not progressives, okay? They're just reactionaries. They're just reactionaries with a different aesthetic because the right-wing, um, ultra-religious, whether it be evangelical or far-right or, or uh, any of the far-right aesthetics just doesn't appeal to them, so they just chose the LaRoucheite aesthetic. I'd like to see her more prominent on the national stage. I I know a lot of people want her to run for president. I don't think she should run for president for like a minimum of like eight more years. I mean, who knows what happens between then and now. But I want to see AOC when she runs. Nobody can say inexperience. Nobody can say it. I want to see her garner a lot of experience before she runs. Because I feel like uh, a lot of the problems that we had during the Obama presidency somewhat came from Obama's lack of experience. Not to say he didn't have any experience, but compared to somebody like Joe Biden, who's been able to maneuver very skillfully to get a lot of stuff passed, he didn't have nearly as much experience as the Biden man, okay? Okay. LaRouche was a thing back in the 1980s. Is there a resurgence of it? Yeah, it's like the Jackson Hinkle type crowd. Those, That's like the resurgence of LaRoucheism, yeah. Soda. Soda. Biden is being based. Biden super based. Super based. Dark Brandon moment. Biden had a wild, brave new world compared to Obama, though. But I don't know, because it feels like after the end of the Bush presidency, like there was so much opportunity for hope and change, right? I mean, hope and change, that was like the selling point. Uh, but, you know, nothing ever really came of it. I mean, we got some stuff, just not nearly as much as we're getting during the Biden presidency, which even in, which in my opinion is still not enough. But and we're getting more, more than I expected. Is Biden better than Obama? Honestly, considering what Biden has done in two years compared to what Obama did in eight, he could be on path to having a better presidency than Biden. He had certainly a better first two years than Obama did, 
um so far he's had like if i take all of obama's eight years and judge it against biden's then it's then it's like not a fair match because it's two years to eight but if we compare biden's first two years and obama's first two years biden's just gotten more done and he's gotten more done with a more difficult legislative position which is impressive and shows where biden's experience came into play I would say that the one thing that um I think Obama was better on than Biden so far would probably be health care. Um, while Obamacare is not my chosen option, Biden hasn't really done all that much. I mean, he's done the thing so people can buy lower cost uh, hearing aids. He's made it so there's like, a, I think, a price cap on medication for people on Medicare, uh, which is good. But Obama w Obamacare was more all encompassing than that. Biden looks decent because Trump was so bad. Um, I think Biden looks decent not only because Trump was so bad, but also because he's in a very difficult legislative position with only 50 senators, two of which are Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin, and he's still able to get as much done as he is. I think that's why, the why he looks so good, because he's getting more accomplished with less tools at his disposal. Let's see what Aramante has to say about this. To my knowledge, AOC has never said a word about the 2014 U.S. bad coup. Based coup? You mean the based moment? You mean the based moment? Inshallah. Out with Yanukovych. Inshallah. Inshallah. Okay, that's enough. I forgot how stupid Aramate is for a second. I don't want to read these tweets. <laughs> I forgot how bad. It wasn't. A okay, the thing, the reason why Yanukovych got overthrown was because his police brutalized protesters, then murdered protesters after pulling out of a very popular deal with the European Union. Then he tried to outlaw protesting. If there's something that will encourage protests, it's trying to outlaw protesting, making it so no more than three people can gather. That's a bad thing to do. It's a bad thing to do in reference to protesting.